yeah, baby. Welcome to Stoppage Time, everybody, with the Enjoy and Child Bucket Song. Big shout out to our partners, PointsBet, for providing the platform that we deserve. Yes, that's right. The best platform in the universe. Stoppage time coming your way right now. Buckets, how are you doing? Ian, I am doing well. And you are damn right we deserve this platform, especially after the damage we did with our parlays this weekend. I'm in the best mood I've been in ages. I'm making on I'm making money on a league that I've never even watched because of you, Ian. So thank you for all that you do for this show. And thank you to our partners. Buckets. I will be thanking you a lot in this show. I'm just letting you know in <laughs> advance. There's a lot of praise coming your way. Episode number 56 coming your way right now. Um, shout out to my man, John Bucket Timer, who had a hell of a weekend, and we cannot wait to dive straight into it. Let's waste no more time. Buckets, what a weekend we had. You went two and three. I went three and two. Now, I'm just going to rattle off some of my bets here real quickly before we get to the talking points, Okay. I missed my Friday best bet with Arsenal not winning, uh, even though Saka did score a goal there. Congratulations to everybody who tailed his uh, anytime goal score. Um, I also missed my weekend parlay, which was Rangers, Celtic, and Arsenal. Not one of those fucking teams won. So sorry to everybody out there who tailed that parlay. <laughs> um, but I'm not going to apologize for what happened next in my betting. I went on and I hit my Saturday best bet with the over two and a half goals between Fulham and Leeds. Congratulations, 0-0 zero, zero at halftime. Nothing better when a bet like that hits in the second half. Minus 105 on points bet. Congratulations to all that tailed. Then on Sunday, my best bet hit with Barcelona beating Atletico Madrid. Minus 105 also on points bet. But that's not the biggest talking point, John Bucketheimer, from this past weekend. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Buckets, you have created stoppage time history with the biggest win we have ever had on our stoppage time show. And I'm going to tell you something, Buckets. You deserve it. Take it away. (laughs) Well, before we get into, as you mentioned, the biggest win in stoppage time history, let me get my losers out of the way first, Ian, because we're transparent on the show. And I got a couple of them. Schalke, pathetic. Monaco, pathetic. Bologna, pathetic. Boom. Losers out of the way. Let's focus on the winners that we had. My biggest parlay in stoppage time history was a plus 5,800 parlay. It was three people to be the first goal scorer. Not any time the first goal scorer in their respective games, and it took place over the entire weekend. We had Kylian Mbappe, first goal scorer, who scored not one, but two within the first 20 minutes of their game. Absolute domination. Followed by Jonathan David, first goal scorer for Lille. He got a penalty in around the 40th to 45th minute there. Grabbed that for us. And a lot of people, actually, Ian, could not find the third goal scorer. So we had a lot of people already tweeting us saying, Buckets and Ian, I just cashed a plus 1,300 ticket because of you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. For those of you that did not cash, we had Mauro or Mauro Icardi for Galatasaray to be the first goal scorer, but he did not start. And per sportsbooks rules, if your player does not start and there is a goal before they come on, that leg is voided. So ultimately, all of us cashed a plus 1300 first goal score ticket together, Ian. And it's not going to be the last one. I love that formula. And you know damn well we're going to go back to those bets. Let's do first and foremost, congratulations. Plus 1,300 is an amazing. Ooh. Congratulations on breaking a record here at stoppage time. We Ooh. now have a, a new target in our sites that we're setting to try and break. Uh, the previous target, if I'm not mistaken, was plus 900 with Mbappe in the World Cup. Yep, it was a Mbappe brace, I believe, at 9, 950, somewhere around there. All right, so you grab it right now, Buckets, and I'm thanking you for that one. Congratulations (laughs) to everybody else out there who tailed. But there's a lesson to be learned about this bet right now. Uh, Something I didn't know, certainly. Something you didn't know, which you are learning. And this is the beauty of gambling space, uh, sports betting, and, of course, points bet in general. We have to dig deep into the, the, the points bet website to find out this information. And please, obviously, let everybody else know in great detail. I know you mentioned it a moment ago, but how did you find that information Um, and really explain exactly what it said on PointsBet. Yeah, so we're learning every day together because this space is so massive and there's so many weird different aspects like this that you don't think of until you explore a plus 6,000 parlay. I reached out to customer chat at PointsBet and I said, hey guys, what happens in the case of this parlay? My guy is not starting. He's on the bench. Do I have to root for no goals for the first 70 minutes till he subs in? Do I automatically lose? How do we play this? And PointsBet told me that if your player does not start and the action that warrants this bet winning or losing happens before he comes in, that leg is just voided if it is part of a parlay. So that parlay doesn't go away. 
you don't lose. That leg is just removed because as soon as we saw in the lineups that he was not starting for Galatasaray, I had a thousand people tweet me saying, Buckets, do I cash out? How do we do this? What's going on? Points bet takes care of, or points bet took care of us at plus 1300 there. But it's good to know moving forward that there's got a little bit of a safety with these parlays sometimes, especially when it is something kind of tricky that usually you'd want to wait to see lineups before pursuing. One thing that caught my attention you just mentioned right there is that you reached out to points bet chat, so support line. Now, was it producer Jay that answered that phone call? I I don't think it was Jay. This person was far too friendly and far too helpful for that to have been Jay. Ian. <laughs> Spirit Airlines helpline. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen, that is awesome. I'm so proud of you and congratulations on all the hard work that you put out there. You said it was going to be a wild one. It was a wild one. I also cashed that ticket at plus 1300. I'm really happy with that one because that was, um, I think that was my biggest hit ever also individually. I'd never had one. But my weekend was about to take a turn for the better, John Bucketheimer, because Major League Soccer was about to kick off. Let me tell you the WTF bet. So just when we thought it couldn't get any better, it seriously did. I had the WTF bet as a four-leg Major League Soccer parlay. It was Cincinnati against Portland, LA Galaxy against Austin, Seattle against Minnesota, Atlanta against Chicago. I keep saying Atlanta. Atlanta against Chicago. And I had Cincinnati, LA, Seattle, and Atlanta all to win. Four-leg parlay, all four teams, plus 611 on points bet. Now... Buckets, buckets, buckets. It hit again, and I couldn't believe <laughs> again. it. Again. 11 It hit again. I mean, I keep giving everybody the word of warning. Please be careful. This is an MLS parlay. Um, I, I have no idea what MLS is going to do, um, but apparently this year, I do know what MLS is going to do because that is the third MLS parlay that I have hit from four MLS parlays that I have given out on this show which is absolutely ridiculous. MLS, once again, did not disappoint. What were you thinking when you saw that my parlay had a chance? So when you hit the first three legs and then Atlanta United scored to go up 1-0 early in that fourth leg, I thought about tweeting out saying, guys, if you do want to hedge this parlay, bet double chance on the opponents right now. But I said, no, no, no. Ian knows what he's doing. I'm not going to doubt him. I'm going to let this ride out. Then in what, the 89th minute, we're 1-1 all drawn up. And I was like, damn it, Ian, I knew I should have told people to hedge this, but it just didn't matter. And one thing that we've talked about time and time again on the show, Ian, is home field advantage. And I saw you lean very heavily into those home guys, right? Yes. I mean, it was only one away team in Major League Soccer this past weekend that won. And that was DC United at Orlando. Every other team won. And that also comes into play with a story I'm about to share with you. Now, because Buckets already pointed out that we're open and we're transparent with our show. We like to share a little bit of our lives. We obviously talk about our personal lives a lot more than we probably should do. Um, I'm going to introduce to you something crazy that happened on Saturday night between myself and my wife. No, 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 no. Calm down. I'm not going down that road. So me and my wife, Nicole, were sitting watching um, MLS action. The first kickoffs already took place. Started to have a good feeling about my bets. And I was like, you know, I'm really enjoying this, but I'm enjoying watching Major League Soccer with my wife. So I said, hey, Nicole, you want to put 50 bucks on and we'll just try and pick up some parlays. Anyway, we got a little bit carried away, John Bucketheimer, because me and my wife, Nicole, who's a massive uh, fan of the show and a huge fan of John Bucketheimer's forehead, we placed a couple of bets here and I'm going to share them with you. We placed a six leg parlay, it was a tie or LFC. It was Houston Dynamo or tie, Real Salt Lake or tie, Colorado Rapids or tie, LA Galaxy money line, Seattle Sounders money line. And guess what, John Bucketheimer? It hit at plus 1,316. But that wasn't enough for my wife, Nicole. She said, hey, no, Ian, I want more. So then I placed another bet while these games before they actually kicked off. And I actually put a four-leg parlay. It was LA Galaxy to win, Seattle Sounders to win, Real Salt Lake to win, and Colorado Rapids to win. Now, I was really, really heavy favoring Colorado to win this game. And my wife, Nicole, stepped in and said, no, no, don't want to. I don't, I don't really feel like Colorado are going to win. I think they're going to tie. I think you should go for the double chance right there. So she made me take away the money line Colorado. 
and put me as a double chance with Colorado to obviously win or tie. So I had LA Galaxy, Seattle Sounders, Real Salt Lake, and a double chance Colorado Rapids. And guess what happened? They tied that game. Plus 534, that hit. So myself and my wife, Nicole, had a hell of a weekend, John Bucket Timer. Ian, why is she not on the show right now giving out parlays for everybody? Well, she almost made an appearance a moment ago. She came through with a beautiful dress that she's uh, going to wear to an event we're having in New York City tomorrow night. And um, I almost brought her on the show. But I will at some point introduce her to our show. She (laughs) wants to come down into the studio and share her thoughts. But as you can imagine, we were waiting for Seattle Sounders, the last team to score a goal. They scored in the 79th minute. I'm a former Portland Timbers captain. And uh, I fucking hate Seattle Sounders. But I was cheering <laughs> like it was a World Cup final when Seattle Sounders, we were high-fiving each other. It was midnight. We were just jumping for joy when Seattle Sounders scored to get that winning goal. But Buckets, get this. That wasn't the only bet I placed this weekend. No, no, no. Because I'm a little bit mad. Uh, personally, as I said to everybody else, I'm being transparent here, introducing you to my life. Um, I placed two more bets. I placed an eight-leg parlay. NYCFC or tie, New England Revolution or tie, FC Cincinnati to win, Houston Dynamo or a tie, Real Salt Lake or tie, LA Galaxy to win, Seattle Sounders to win, and Atlanta United to win. And guess what happened? They all hit. Once again, that was at plus 1,645. <laughs> but that wasn't enough for Ian. Ian had to go a little crazier. I'm only putting like half a unit on these, by the way, just so everybody knows. I put a four-leg parlay, NYCFC to win, New England Revolution to win, Montreal to win, and Cincinnati to win. It was plus 1,963, and I cashed that ticket as well. Needless to say, Buckets, this was a hell of a weekend, a truly special weekend of Major League Soccer betting for me. I don't bet every week of Major League Soccer. When I go to watch NYCFC, I just like to go watch games and have fun. Um, And you'll not be getting a weekly bet from me for Major League Soccer. I know we're having success there right now, but I have to feel it. I have to really get that, that thought process in my mind before I actually put my money on it. Buckets, this is uh, this was a crazy weekend, man. And MLS has proven to be a good league to bet on right now. Well, I know that, Ian, you just took the time to tell everybody that you hit seven or eight massive parlays. But let us not forget that we also, on top of all of that, hit the bonkers play in my Azerbaijani league in the matchup between Karabag and Zira FK. It's not quite as exciting. Not quite as sexy as the plus 600. But that was still an additional plus 140 hit, Ian. We absolutely killed this weekend. And I'm so grateful that I'm able to do this with you because that it really was just ridiculous. It you sent weird. me a message. Oh. Yeah. You sent me a message and I'm going to introduce it to everybody as well. So you sent a message to me and you said, at this point, <laughs> if you're not betting with us, you're actually losing money. Right? I mean, what is it? Eight shows in a row now of profit? At some point, you know, Ian, we can only lead the horse to the water. Like, we can't make you drink. You got to start tailing these parlays just to sprinkle. We're betting responsibly. But yes. damn it, man, you and MLS, it's something special. Yeah, listen, I'm having a great run right now. But I, I do obviously want everybody to bet responsibly. Um, But have some fun with this. I had a great time. I was, you know, putting, you know, little bets on here. I put a quarter unit, half a unit on. It was nothing. It was not even a full unit bet. I was just having some fun on some long shot bets. And I think it's always good to do when you're watching MLS late at night or you're watching NBA or you're watching football late at night or whatever it may be, have a little bit of fun like that. And um, points bet sometimes just gives me these offers and I'm like, yep, I'll take that one. And major league soccer this season, <laughs> especially with the home field advantage, excuse me, the home field advantage, it's something really worth diving into if you can have some fun with it as well. Buckets, this was, in my personal opinion, the most crazy Biggest response that we ever received on social media was this past weekend because of your fabulous hit with the goal scorers, your crazy bonkers bet, my WTF bet, and the madness that was going on around. We are creating a big buzz on the social media scene. Yeah, we we really are. And it's great for me to see all the buzz when you do have winners like this. But what I appreciate from our viewers is even when we don't have as successful weekends, you still have people just learning from us, right? We've got people tweeting at us saying, hey, I noticed you guys didn't bet on your boy Tati in the Girona Real Madrid game. Well, I still did. Didn't know he existed a month ago, but I'm betting him every week. You'd love to see stuff like that, man. And the social media response has been and continues to be incredible. And Tati Castellanos went on to score how many goals against Real Madrid? Four? 
four goals against Real Madrid. The first player since 1947 to score four goals in a La Liga game against Real Madrid. Our guy, my good friend, Valentin Tati. Oh, excuse me, hat-trick, hat-trick. No, 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 four Tati Castellanos. I mean, this is absolutely sensational. I didn't even get to watch the game. I was listening to it. I've been too busy working. It's been absolutely an insane day. But I'm so happy to see Tati Castellanos getting the headlines that he deserves. Buckets, this show, I want to do something really different because there's a massive game coming up this week in the Premier League. We talked about it on episode 55 that I want to focus on the biggest game of the year, which is, of course, in the Premier League. It's Manchester City against Arsenal. Um, Zero disrespect to any other games that's taken place on Wednesday, but our focus has to be on this game and making sure we provide maybe a different look or an outlook to this game for our listeners, our loyal listeners out there. So if it's okay with you, I would like to go heavy on this game. Is that cool? I think we have to. It's the game of the year, right? It is the game of the year. There's no doubt about it. Let me put my headphone back in here so I can actually hear what you just said there. Listen, I know that points bet are going to be all over this game. And I know me and you need to give the game the respect that it deserves because it is a top of the top of the table clash. It's first against second, five points separating the two teams, Arsenal on top, but Manchester City have two games still to catch up. So there's an opportunity here for Arsenal when they could run out and win the title. Manchester City win they're probably going to win the title. So this game is huge. And I want to make sure that stoppage time and points bet shows this game the love that it deserves. I want from you, Buckets, two bets from this game. I want a best bet for this game. And I also want a same game parlay. Let's begin with your best bet. Let's start with the best bet, Ian. And I am not going to hold back here. I am so, so heavily on the Manchester City wagon here. It's it's dangerous. I have a rule of thumb that I do not put more than five units ever on a single game. And I have five units already played on different Manchester City lines because I frankly think that Arsenal's just outclassed here. You've got Man City who are in their best form of the season while Arsenal are possibly in their worst form of the season. Arsenal coming off of three draws in a row, being up 2-0 to Liverpool and losing the lead, being up 2-0 to West Ham and ending in a draw, and then conceding three times to Southampton. That is just not the form you're allowed to have when you're playing a Manchester City side that have outscored their opponents 31 to four in the last seven games. This City team is absolutely blitzing everyone and I'm very heavily on the City side, but the money line at minus 185 is just a little bit too much juice for me to play by itself. So for my best bet, I'm going with Manchester City on the money line plus over one and a half goals in this game. I think City covered that by themselves, no problem. I've actually got a slight ladder of City scoring up to three goals in this game, no problem. And I just don't think it's quite Arsenal's time yet. It's been a hell of a run. It's been impressive to see them most likely going to end in the top four at the very least and get that UCL spot again. But I don't see them stopping City in the current form they're in. And I say this as a Bayern Munich fan that has had my heart stomped on by City multiple times in the past week. I just think it's their year still, Ian, and I got to back them here. Yes, as you will find out in the show, we're probably going to heavily favor Manchester City in this game. But let's not forget that Arsenal are the best team in the Premier League on the road this campaign. Um, That's a great best bet. And it comes into play a little bit later on with one of my same game parlays. So I'm excited to share that one with you. Here's my best bet, Buckets. I'm intrigued to hear what you think about this one. Of course, I'm going to Manchester City minus 185, as Buckets pointed out, against Arsenal plus 450 on the money line. My bet here is the halftime result to be a Manchester City lead. Now, a Manchester City win at halftime, an early goal seems like probably the best way to start a big game. It's currently sitting at plus 100 on points bet. Plus numbers to me for Man City to be leading at halftime is just delicious. It's too sexy. It's like, you know, you take the the double look, you look once and then you're like, oh, I just couldn't take my eyes off. I had to go back to it. I find it very hard to choose a fair bet in this one. I'm sure Buckets also uh, was trying so hard to get something that was exciting and interesting because Manchester City are heavily favored in this. Um, But even if you just look at the statistics, it is relatively even. Here's some stats for you. Man City have been the best uh, home team in the Premier League. 15 games played, 13 wins, 1 loss, 50 goals scored, and only let in 15 goals at home. City are undefeated in all competitions since February when they lost away to Tottenham Hotspur. They lost by 1 goal to nil. Manchester City have won every single home game in 2023. 12 straight games across all competitions. They did lose that one home game back in November to Brentford, who... 
were a bit lucky on the day, but also played some good football and are a very good side. And we all kind of respect Brentford for what they've done this year. On the other hand, on the other side of the coin, I'm looking at Arsenal away from home, best away record, as I just mentioned in the Premier League. 16 games, 11 wins, three draws, two losses. Arsenal have scored 32 goals from 16 away games. Incredible this season in the Premier League. Arsenal's last loss was at Everton, which you'll remember cost me very dearly on our stoppage time show. Now, the last two away games have been pretty costly for Arsenal themselves. They drew 2-2 at Liverpool. They drew at West Ham. Um, and I think both of those games they made mistakes in. I feel pretty good about this bet. Halftime, that's all I'm looking for, is Manchester United, Manchester United, Manchester City to get off to a good start in this game. Get off to a flying start in this game and really get a goal or two and have that advantage. And I think Buckets will be pretty happy with the way that starts as well. Man City have been leading at halftime in 10 of the 15 games they have played at home this season. I'm going to read it out for you. 10 games they've been leading, three draws at halftime. They have been losing in two games at halftime. Arsenal have only been losing twice on the road at halftime, which itself is an incredible statistic. So a lot of information for everybody to dive into right there. I'm going for Manchester City. I just think they're too strong. They'll start out of the gates very quickly, get an early goal, and most likely protect that goal, be 1-0, 2-0, 2-1 at halftime. Bucket your thoughts. Can't hear you. Hello? Did I fix it? There you go. There we go. There Damn it. you go. It's called Damn it, mute. Jay. I, I think Jay muted me. That's <laughs> well, we'll blame him for that one. And I think it's a great look. I think halftime money line is a brilliant bet. And to get that at plus odds is something that we can't really ignore. We can't forget that Manchester City are also, are, are also still chasing a treble right now. So this is the kind of game where we could see them come out very aggressive for the first 45 minutes. And as you mentioned, get that two goal lead, kind of slow down the second half and relax a little bit. We also have seen Arsenal struggle to maintain first half dominance. They conceded in all three of their last games in the first half, including a Southampton goal in the what first 90 seconds last time they played. Yes. It's a team that can get caught off guard. And I think city is fast enough and scary enough on the attack. That they're going to do just that. You mentioned the treble just a moment ago, obviously Manchester city and Manchester United going head to head in the FA cup final. Now we're looking forward to that one. I believe it's in June 10th, no June 3rd. And that's actually a week before City most likely will play in the Champions League final, or at least City have an opportunity to be in the final chasing that treble. So how about this? The last team to get the treble in, in the UK was uh, Manchester United, who were the first team also to do it as well. They won the Champions League, they won the FA Cup, and they won the Premier League title. It was 1999. So City could be the second team to do that but they've got to beat Man United they've obviously got to beat Real Madrid to get into the final as well so excited to see how that all plays out let's get to your same game parlay um I'm excited about this one Buckets I'm really intrigued I went for a kind of a weird one here because a part of this same game parlay is a bet that I've never placed before and is a market I've never placed before getting the two easy ones out of the way I have a Man City first half goal Holland anytime goal score doesn't give a whole lot of value, but this third leg brings the same game parlay all the way up to plus 1300, Ian, tying the current record here on stoppage time. And I want to get your opinions on this. I'm looking at the card market and I'm looking at the specific player to get a card market. I'm going for a weird one. Aaron Ramsdale to get carded is the third leg of this parlay. And the reason why I'm taking him, it's kind of weird to take a goalie to get a card, but there's two ways that goalies get cards. First is kind of that aggressive one-on-one -on -one foul where they try to stop the goal or the goal scorer. Someone like Holland, they trip him, they push him, whatever it is, which could happen. But the second reason that goalkeepers get cards is time wasting. And if this game is close at all, you've got to believe that Aaron Ramsdale is going to have a certain level of shithousery here, as a lot of these players might, because Arsenal could very well be playing for a draw here. So as long as it's 0-0 or they're down by one, or if they go up 1-0 early, expect a lot of slow play from Arsenal. A lot of stretching, a lot of bouncing, a lot of whatever they have to do to make this game matter. I think Aaron's Ramsdale could get a card here. And at plus 1,300, that's worth a sprinkle. That's all I'm saying. Thoughts? Well, listen, it's, it's worth a sprinkle, yeah, for sure, because it, it very likely could happen here. He has had one yellow card, if I'm not mistaken, this season against Liverpool only a couple of weeks ago in a 2-2 draw. So there's every possibility. But yes, shit shithousery comes into play here with goalkeepers wasting time, goalkeepers obviously getting aggressive, losing their temper. You would imagine the pressure on uh, the goalkeeper as well from City because they'll create so many chances. He's going to get frustrated as well, Ramsdale. Let's hope he doesn't make a mistake in this game. I want whoever to win this 
this game to play their best football. They've got to fight to deserve to win this game. I hope it's City because that's where we're heavily leaning towards. But nice little look there and something uniquely different. What made you go down that route? I wanted to do something special and I wanted to do something different because it's very easy for me to just say Man City money line, Holland to score, kind of take the superstar parlay. But that would have been too close to my best bet. So I wanted to find a unique angle that gives us something just different to root for here. Well, thanks for taking the word right out of my mouth. There it is. Superstar Superstar parlay. We're going for the superstar bet. I have to go for it. This is the same game parlay. It's obviously Manchester City against Arsenal. And I'm looking at Manchester City Manchester City money line. I'm looking at over one and a half total goals. I might go for over two and a half total goals, over three and a half total goals, and sprinkle a little unit, half a unit, quarter of a unit on that as well. Erling Haaland anytime goal scorer. If you go for City money line, over one and a half, Erling Haaland anytime, it's plus numbers. It's plus 115. I have to go for it just by the fact that I love record breakers. I love awesome goal scorers. I like to see the superstar bet. It is my favorite bet. And obviously, we're creating big names with stoppage time and points bet. Manchester City, as we mentioned already, have the best uh, home Premier League record in the league right now. Um, I don't see any reason why they're not going to win another game. They're clear favorites. Over one and a half total goals has hit 100% of the time in home games for Manchester City this season. 100% hits hit. So... You can almost guarantee it's probably going to hit again. Erling Haaland, 22 years old, 35 Champions League goals this season from 20, uh, for all time, from 27 games all time. This season in the Premier League, 32 goals from 28 Premier League games. And Manchester City this season, he scored 48 goals from 41 appearances all competitions. This guy is on fucking fire. How do you stop a goal scorer like that? He's two goals away from equaling a Premier League record, a uh, goal scoring record. He's broken already many Premier League record, but goal scoring record. And here is the holders right now. Newcastle United's Andy Cole scored 34 goals in 93-94, but that was 42 matches in a season. Alan Shearer also did it. He scored 34 goals for Blackburn Rovers back in 94-95 when they, I think, won the Premier League back in those days. And by the way, it was also 42 games in a Premier League campaign. Mohamed Salah scored 32 from a 38-game uh, season. So that's the record right now that Erling Haaland is on but he's got time left to break this record. Now, I did have a quick look because I'm a little bit weird like that and I want our listeners to get great value. Um, This one's not a bad little look as well. To tie the record, he needs a double. To break the record, to end up on 35 Premier League goals, he needs a hat trick. Buckets, have a quick guess at what the hat trick line is on points bet. Man, I'm going to say plus 550. Plus 1,100 on oh, points man. bet. For Erling Haaland to score a hat-trick in a game like this, I might sprinkle a little <laughs> half unit on that as well. What do you think about that, though? Plus 1,100, that's crazy. That's good value. I mean, he has to get one less goal than Tati got today. So I'm not saying it's impossible. I think I think at plus 1,100, it's definitely worth a sprinkle. That's the kind of thing where I would do the ladder method. I'll probably play his brace for a little bit. I'll probably play his hat-trick for a little bit less, but... uh. Man, Arsenal's defense is just so bad right now. It's tough. It's yeah, tough they're struggling. Not to. They're conceding goals, and Erling Haaland most likely will get one. And if he's not getting one, certainly the playmakers around him look for Mares, De Bruyne, maybe to have an impact, Jack Grealish to have an impact. I mean, they've got so many impact players, and they're relatively at full fitness. Saliba's missing for Arsenal, which is a key loss for them. Um, but overall thoughts on this game real quickly. Give me your scoreline prediction and how you think this game's going to go. I think it is going to be Manchester City domination all the way. I do think that both teams score here with Arsenal getting a late goal that doesn't really mean anything. I'm looking at 3-1 score prediction with the City winning. I think it's going to be goals in this game as well. I'm going for 4-2 score line in this Ooh. game. I honestly think Holland's going to get two. He might even get three. I just think big game player is going to step up. He's going to be the difference between this season Manchester City winning trophies or not. If he doesn't step up in a game like this, Arsenal might win. They might score goals and they might win this game. But if Haaland steps up in this game, which I think is is very much going to happen, they'll win this game. They'll then also use Haaland in the FA Cup final and Haaland in the Champions League final. (laughs) And he will probably end up around about 65 goals this year. He's on 48 right now. And he's probably got, what, maybe 12 games overall if they make it to the final. Maybe less than that. Maybe 11 games still to go. 
he could absolutely score 10 plus goals in 11 games. I mean, it's not a crazy thing to say. Uh, Buckets, before we do get out of here, I want to give a little bit of an opportunity to the other teams who are playing on Wednesday that nobody's going to be watching because Manchester City are playing against Arsenal in the biggest game of the season. Um, But I want to give some love. So do you have a bonkers bet for everybody out there from any game that is not including this one? I do, Ian, and it might not be the biggest game of the season, but for me, it's the second biggest game. It's a game that I'm going to be watching because we are going to the Serbian Super League. For those of you that have never heard of this little rivalry before, I'm betting on something called the Eternal Derby. We're going to the Serbian Super League in a matchup between two teams from the capital city of Belgrade, and which is widely known as one of the most dangerous sporting events in the sporting world. Full police forces and SWAT teams will be in attendance in a match where violence between fans has just become the norm here. This, of course, is the game between Partisan Belgrade and Red Star Belgrade. This is normally a game between the first team in Serbia and the second team in Serbia. However, for the first time since 2014, this is not the case. The host Partisan Belgrade are having their worst season in over a decade. They've gone through three managers. They've gone through match-fixing allegations, and they've also only won one of their last six matches. This is a team in crisis who are welcoming their rivals, Red Star Belgrade, who are 20 points ahead of anyone else in the Serbian Super League. While they don't necessarily need to win, they're going to win because this is a rivalry match between two teams that hate each other, and the lines are soft because of that reason. Red Star Belgrade, money line, minus 105. I gotta be honest, Ian, I have two or three units on this one because for me, this is a game that while it's normally pretty low scoring, I think Red Star are going to put up two or three goals here. No sweat. Did you have a look to see how much it was on the line for this game to be abandoned 25 minutes in? No, I didn't. Is that actually a line? I have no idea, but because it I, be a I, it's, it's worth a sprinkle if that is a line because <laughs> the, the amount of times you'll probably see three or four interruptions in this match from fans fighting, charging the field, throwing flares, whatever it is. It's look up videos on this. This rivalry is insane. Well, let's talk about this real quickly. There has been some incidents around Europe. Um, obviously, recently we did see in the Netherlands there was uh, beer bottles and cans being thrown at officials. In Germany, in the third division, Zwickau versus Rotweiss Essen, somebody dropped a beer from a meter away into the referee's face after sending off a player and giving a penalty kick to the opposition. Zwickau are trying to stay in the third division. And this, I swear, there's a video out there. If everybody go go find it on social media. This fan is a meter away, throws his whole beer into the face of the referee. The game got completely abandoned and stopped. It's happening more and more buckets. We're seeing more and more of fans having an influence on how games are played out. So... We are, and it's it's weird, and for me, it's easy to say as somebody who's not these games, like, just don't be a shitty person, don't interrupt the game, let the players play, let the rest refs, but we are seeing it a lot more in games like this and in European games, and it matters because it affects how these bets pay out. We had a bet, or I had a bet on social media on that Ajax versus PSV game this weekend, and when the beer was thrown on the field, they said, we're going to take a temporary suspension of the game, everyone clears the pitch, and they said, if this happens the second time, the match will be abandoned, and if that happens, your bets will be voided. So it's something that does affect us at betters, but also, Ian, as somebody that has played the game and as someone that played for a very passionate team like St. Pauli, did you ever experience this as a player? Oh, dude, I have no <laughs> idea, man. I was telling people yesterday when I was watching the images in the lower leagues in Germany in particular it was just absolutely wild. I remember we played away to Dynamo Dresden, which is uh, in the east of Germany. And they make you walk through the fans to get to the dressing room. So as soon as you come out of the bus, there's a thousand Dresden ultras, hooligans, all waiting for you. Slapping the bus and hitting the window, throwing shit at the window. And I was like, wow, this is absolutely insane. And I could hear it from me just about to get out of the bus. They were shouting, shy Sami, shy Sami. Basically, fucking American, fucking American, shy Sami. And I'm like, Oh my God, what what have I just done? Like, this is insane. Got out the bus, they were grabbing me, they were pushing me. Needless to say, Buckets, I did not start that game very well. I was scared shitless. 20,000 fans in a stadium, probably more than that. It was probably about 30,000 fans in the stadium. Third division in Germany. And it was so loud. I remember the gaffer made us train, the coach, he made us train with earplugs in so we couldn't hear each other because on the pitch, you couldn't hear each other. They were just so loud. 
but throwing things onto the fuel was a common thing back in the day 20 30 years ago it was mainly plastic cups and beers and stuff like that um and i i know for a fact like obviously with us soccer they train a lot of the young players to deal with objects being thrown at you because when you go down and play in concacaf and it could be mexico or wherever else you get bags of piss thrown at you you get cups thrown at you bottles coins lighters i mean they basically train you on how to handle those situations so it's pretty wild. Anyway, you, let's get back on topic. Go ahead. Oh, one more thing. Did you see the one that happened in the Turkish Super League? I believe it was close to like October of last year where a fan ran and he took out the flag at the corner and hit ran behind the goalkeeper and hit him over the head with it. I understand. No, I, 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 it was a, I had to get, it was like 17 stitches in the side of his head. He was concussed, but they like had to call off the game. But what I do appreciate seeing in a horrible situation, I like when fans monitor fans because the fan ran off the field cheering and another fan jumped on the pitch and started swinging at him. He's like, what? The, I mean, his own team support was like, dude, what the hell are you doing? Like, there, there is a little bit of fan moderation in some of these cases, at least. So I do appreciate that. We, we have that. a, we have a St. Pauli as well. Um, somebody threw a beer at um, an official, which is a plastic cup, and it landed a meter away. Um, but yeah, the uh, fans went after that one fan. And it's just something you just don't do. Have respect for other human beings. And um, unfortunately, we're seeing that there's less of that in the game right now i'm going to give you my wtf bet and then we're going to have a quick discussion before we get out of here um i'm looking forward to this bet and i'm really intrigued what buckets thinks about this one i'm going back to the premier league because it's caught my attention the battle at the top of the premier league for the title is fierce the battle for champions league spots is fierce the battle for top seven spots is fierce the battle to avoid relegation is fucking electric and that's where my wtf bet is going i'm looking at nottingham forest plus 475 Brighton, minus 180. My best bet here is Nottingham Forest, double chances, plus 150 on points bet. Ooh. Really feel good about this one. Trust me, I was very tempted to take Nottingham Forest on the money line at plus 475, and I might sprinkle a little bit on it anyway just to have some fun. But let me try and make sense of this bet for you. It is called, obviously called a WTF bet for a reason because this one's a little bit out there. Nottingham Forest, second bottom of the Premier League. No wins in the last 11 Premier League games. However, 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 let me repeat myself. At home, they're tough to beat. 16 home games. They've lost only five of those 16 games. They've won only five, but they've drawn six. They've scored 19 goals and let in only 20 goals. So they are quite competitive at home. Brighton, away from home, are very good. I'm not going to ta take anything away from them. They've won seven from 15 games, which is really impressive for a team that's trying to get into a European place. Um, scored an impressive 29 goals on the road. So double... Uh, Double chance would come under threat here with maybe Brighton getting a goal in this game. But I do believe Forrest score in this game, no doubt about it. They lost in the FA Cup semi-final against Manchester United last Sunday after extra time and penalty kicks. Now, listen, I get it. Brighton, they are trying to end up in a European place. They are a fabulous team to watch. Pep Guardiola saying they're the best team in the world right now as to how they attack. That's high praise from someone wow. like Pep Guardiola. Um, but when you go to extra time, you go to penalty kicks and then you lose penalty kicks in an FA Cup game. What does that do to your mental state? What does that do to your fatigue, your body, your willingness, your commitments, your confidence? There might be repercussion because then you've got to go to Nottingham to play against a team that's very good at home. So a win for Nottingham Forest, let's not forget, might just get them out of the relegation zone. So I am favoring that we could see a surprise result. And with double chance, just giving me a bit of a support system at plus 150 on points bet. Buckets, I've got a fucking good feeling this might hit. This is definitely an I have the feeling bet because only Ian Joy looks at a team that has lost four straight and said that they're playing one of the best attacking teams in Europe and they're going yes. to win or they're going to draw. I respect the hell of this bet and I actually like it more than I thought. When you first said it, I kind of wanted to just, you know, kind of hold back the laughter. But it makes sense specifically because you mentioned home field advantage, and because you mentioned how tired Brighton is going to be. We saw almost a mirror situation with Roma and Atalanta and Serie A, in which Roma had to play Feyenoord in a game that went to extra time, and they yeah. were absolutely dreadful playing at Atalanta because they were exhausted. You could see those players were just not quite ready to go that extra mile yet, and we could have a very similar situation here. So I, I'm surprised that I like it, but I'm going to be tailing it. I think it's because of the success we have had. And I know there's a lot of people out there saying, God, I can't wait for the recap show. We would like to apologize to everybody out there. Uh, producer Rob made us delay the show for a day for some fucking stupid reason. No idea which what the reason was. But at the same time, to everybody out there who tuned in on Monday to to, to find it on the podcast platform and YouTube or wherever you, you listen to the show, we apologize that it wasn't there 
on Monday. Um, but thankful that we had an opportunity to, to share our success on this Tuesday. Buckets, that's not the only thing that producer Rob sent us. He also sent us a little note today saying, boys, boys, did you see that there might be Champions League games in the United States of America, <laughs> in North America? Little shout out to my good friends at Men and Blazers. They had Alexander Seferin, who is the UEFA president, on their show, which is an amazing wow. get, by the way. Can't understand why producer Rob can't get someone like that on our show. Maybe one day we'll make it happen. But I thought it was a great message because realistically to see or envision or maybe even have that feeling that maybe we'll see a Champions League game take place in the United States of America. What would that mean for someone like you, Buckets, who's just a lover of this game, wanting to see maybe a Bayern Munich take place here Man. against someone in, in the Champions League? For, a game for, here? For me, that's that's life-changing. That's bucket list. Hey, bucket, no, list type of material there. I would love to be able to, I'd travel anywhere in the States to watch Bayern Munich play in a Champions League game like that. So I'm not going to get into all the politics of it, I think it would be truly incredible and an amazing experience. And if it does happen, you bet your ass I'm going to be there, Ian. I'm going to make sure you get to a Champions League game anyway. It doesn't matter if it's in the United States or, or <laughs> anywhere. I will get you to a Champions League game. My goal is to get you and our points bet boys over to Europe for a Champions League game because there is nothing like it. And of course, many people out there will recognize that we have had success live betting. The people who follow us on social media and follow Stoppage Time on social media, they recognize that we're pretty goddamn good when it comes to live betting because we wait for the teams to come out. We have a feeling. We fucking go for it. We have had a lot of success. And that is something, trust me, that is in the works with our group, our amazing, talented group behind the scenes at points. But we have got a lot of cool projects on the go right now that hopefully in the near future we can bring to, to all of you. And we know that live betting and live shows is what you're really looking for. So we're going to try and make that happen. I know. Um, especially producer Rob is working on that one. Buckets, before we do go, uh, Tottenham Hotspur got absolutely mullered at the weekend against Newcastle. <laughs> they conceded six goals in that game. Six goals in that game. A message came out from the players today saying that they were going to give their fans money back if they had a ticket to that game. What would you think? Uh, I'm very torn on that because for me, it sets a dangerous precedent because what if you keep getting, did you use the word mullered? Is that what that was? Yes. What mullered. if that keeps happening? Because that was a pretty... Pretty rough performance and, hard, and hard, just hard to watch, man. I had people tweeting me saying, Buckets, I'm on both teams to score here. We're 20 minutes in. There's been five goals. What the hell do we do? And I'm like, I don't know. Because we haven't seen a situation that bad in the Spurs in a while. But it's just, I'm fine with them refunding it. I think it's probably just going to be a one-off thing. Like, if they go and get killed 6-1 again, I don't think you keep refunding it every time you get beat. Because when you're Spurs, you're going to keep getting beat. But for me, a one-time deal, I, I've got no issue with it. I don't have an issue with it either. I think it's a nice thing. It's a nice gesture. But what I will say, though, Buckets, is that I do believe that you need to take into consideration the fact that people have taken time out of their day. They've spent their hard-earned money on plane tickets, on train tickets, on car, gas, whatever it may be, transportation, just to get up there. Some people stay in Newcastle because it's the other end of England. And um, you need to take into consideration that the ticket price, which was maybe £20, excuse me, 40 pounds, whatever it may be. I have no idea. But the fact that you're just paying a ticket off is, is one thing. I would probably make sure that the next home game was taking care of those fans rather than just give a ticket price back because there's probably fans who have spent tons of money. Put buses on, put planes on, send your fans to a game for free. That would probably be the best reason. If you have a ticket to that game, we're going to send you to the next one for complete free. Um, and it's it's really interesting to see. And obviously Tottenham fired their coach after that game as well and replaced him with Ryan Mason, who's stepping in on a temporary basis. But I'm hearing that Pochettino might be the man who's taking over um, at Ooh. Chelsea as well, which is uh, not yet broken, not yet broken. But Pochettino looks like he's going to be the new Chelsea boss, which is uh, an interesting sight. Buckets! Great weekend, man. How do you even put it into words? What a fabulous weekend we had. Oh, you're asking how do I put it into words? I have no idea, Ian. Let's just do it again this next weekend. Might as well. You were basically lost for words. So you yeah. couldn't put it into words what actually <laughs> happened. Plus 1,300, dude. I mean, that is a hell of a hit there. What did you think when Icardi wasn't in the lineup? I was pissed. I <laughs> feel like... Hope he's, I know he was injured, so you know I'm not going to go after him. But I saw I used to, you texting me the lineup, and I'm sitting there. I put up my phone, and I just put it down. And I went, uh, went to the liquor cabinet. Was good. no, no. I just I was upset, but I was glad to find out how we handle that, though. 
we learned from that experience. And now I know moving forward when I do this, we don't have to worry quite as much about lineups, which is valuable. Pretty impressive, actually, to learn something new. And we do. We continue to learn in this business. Obviously, we're providing a show for exper- expertise, but uh, we're also still learning and we're having some fun along the way. That was really cool to see that hit. And I'll take the plus 1300 all day, all day long. There's no doubt about it. We'll be back again on Thursday with uh, another Stoppage Time episode for everybody out there who's enjoying the episodes. Continue to follow, like, subscribe. Make sure you're leaving comments. The comments mean the world to us, especially our production team behind the scenes they love to see the saucy comments so please even if you're listening to the podcast platform or you're watching on youtube whatever it may be drop us a comment even if you're a repeat comment person we love those comments every single week when you leave a comment gives me and and buckets a pat on the back and i can't thank you all enough for the social media messages that i have been receiving and i'm seeing all the messages that buckets gets because he's on social media pretty much 24 7 so please feel free to reach out to him continuously going forward as well and thanks everybody we appreciate you make sure you bet responsibly when it comes to the big one it is of course manchester city against arsenal we can't wait bet responsibly that's the most important message that we can share with everybody outside Side of the fact that me and Buckets will be back on Thursday. I will be in studio, in person, in New York City, making sure we bring the energy so that you guys have all of your betting covered for this weekend that's coming up. And I can't wait. Maybe I'll dive into Major League Soccer once again. Maybe Buckets will have another plus 6,000 bet for us as well in store. We can't wait for it. Everybody out there, have a great, great week. Enjoy the big game tomorrow. And uh, most importantly, make sure you have it. <laughs>